Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Hand. Today, we're gonna check out the new UV features that are in Cinema 40 R22. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and check it out. So as you can tell straight away, if I hit BP UV edit on S22, this uh, layout is so much better than it was before. Um, just toggling back and forth, you can see that there's really not a jarring difference here. Uh, we just get this window up over here along with some uh, new palettes on the bottom that are going to help us do interactive painting or just work on the UV. So let's go ahead and just do that. So if we click on the cog under set UVW from projection, we can change the name. Um, so if you wanted to rename this, we can just say Camaro UVW tag. And then I'm going to use the automatic packed UVs and we'll go ahead and run this. And you can see in the bottom left, it goes through and we're pretty much done. <laughs> so we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm just kidding, but this is so much better than what it was in the past. Um, now we have a fully new algorithm that does UVs for us. And I will have to say that in most cases, I've, I've kind of used this since the release, um, the live in AB session when they first announced it. You know, I went ahead and downloaded it and used it in production, and it's it's really awesome. Um, it's so much better, and it's so much faster, and it's something that I really needed because I was going in and out of different applications and doing more interactive media. Um, so let's go ahead and check out some of the new features in the viewport as well as some of the new features in the 2D viewport. The best thing nowadays, you do not have to change between UV polygons and like the actual UV selection component mode. I hated that. I hated explaining that to people. Um, you can tell from my other videos, uh, I've, you know, shared my disgust about it in the past, but now that's completely gone. So if I was to double click and select the hood, it selects it in the 2D view as well. Some other really awesome added features are under the view, you can go to uh, UV seam. So that's what we're seeing right now. So I can turn that on and off and it changes it for both the 3D view and the 2D view. Um, and then you can go to this awesome view called UV connectivity. So what this is going to allow you to do is um, it's really hard to see it in this view, but you match the colors with the UV borders. So that is super, super handy. Um, not quite as handy here with all these different shells uh, showing, but a welcome, welcome addition. Uh, we also have overlapping polygons, so we can turn that on as well. Um, and some other things like, um, distortion, which is something that's really, really huge. So since this is more of a mechanical model, there's not a ton of distortion in, in an image like this, or I should say in a layout like this. Um, but if you were using something like unwrapping tools for characters, then you would be able to see the distortion, um, where you're not getting enough texel density in some of the, maybe the eyes or the lips or something like that. So something super valuable uh, and a welcome addition. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to split this hood off. So um, I'm just going to go up here and kind of delete it from the main mesh. Um, and now we can just visualize this um, together. You can see there's some more islands down here that we may want to um, look at. So I'm going to go ahead and solo this. Um, another thing that we can do is under filter, we can say, geometry only which is really really nice and handy and it can speed up your viewport quite a lot um, we also if you hit shift V we have um, a lot of different effects here that are enabled so I had super sampling turned on I'm uh, gonna turn that off just for now uh, but we also have um, some of these uh, reflections we have screen space reflections and uh, this welcome edition which is resolution if I hit it 0.5 um, then I will get even more speed in my viewport if I was using something low powered like a laptop. Um, so that is some awesome features here. I'm going to go ahead and tick this back on for us. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is just set the safe frame to zero. So knowing that this edge right here connects to this island, I'm going to go ahead and select the edge and then I'm just going to say UV weld and relax and it goes ahead and snaps that together for us, which is great. Um, I'm going to guarantee that this edge over here needs the same treatment. So I'm going to select that. You can see down here, let's turn off our connectivity real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and say weld and relax. I can select this edge 
across the hood, do the same thing. And then I bet it's back here. Okay, so that's pretty much fixed our hood. Uh, you can see that only took a few seconds. Um, it, it's actually really, really nice, the, the weld and relax feature. Um, it's closer to that stitch and sew that I was talking about in the previous videos. So let's go ahead and do this back portion of the car and then the trunk. So we'll select this, go ahead and split. Come back to our original and get rid of that. Okay, let's go ahead and solo. So for this portion, it looks like, um, let's go ahead and select these guys to see what they are connected to. And you can see it's kind of the inside portions again. And just selecting all of those and hitting UV weld and relax has kind of connected everything back together how we uh, would probably want this piece to look. Um, so let's go ahead and select it. And we can rotate it 90 degrees by using the transform options down here and kind of straighten it up just a little bit. Oh, actually, I'd like to probably rotate it 180 from this position. There we go. And straighten it up just a little bit. We also have this UV packing tab, uh, which is really nice. You can set your target resolution and then uh, maybe preserve this orientation. Um, but this will allow us to snap it into our U to one, uh, zero to one space without having to do it ourselves. Uh, rasterize is a little bit faster than the geomet geometric UV packing. So that's all looking really nice. I'm going to go ahead and rename some of these things. So I'm going to call this the hood. Uh, we'll call this the top. And we'll go back into this view. And we'll use these two portions together. We'll go ahead and split these. Go back into our original and just delete them from the original. And we'll call this the uh, the trunk and tail. And this one's going to be really, really easy and simple. Um, it looks like everything is pretty much ready to go just from that stitch and sew. Um, but if we wanted to maybe just break this up a bit and maybe have a seam kind of coming off Let's just say this portion. Let me go ahead and uh, figure out my selection, what I want to do. So maybe something like right where that knot is. And then we'll go ahead and cut it from there. So we'll say unwrap. And you can see that kind of alleviates a little bit of distortion. Uh, and we could probably check. I'm yeah, it looks like I, I do have my distortion uh, turned on and you can see that it's just very minimal. So using that unwrap uh, is really great because it knows what you have selected. So if you had um, some edges selected and you go ahead and hit unwrap, it's going to go and break those apart for you and kind of relax it. So it looks really nice. Um, so yeah, that's looking really good. What we could probably do is just rotate this a bit. And let's see if this is the bottom or the top part. So that's actually the bottom. I'll just go ahead and rotate this around. I'm just going to do this super quick and just rough. And then we'll try to do some packing to this. Oops. Select both of them. And I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this, uh, this front part right here. So I'm going to, uh, again, split this. and call this uh, just something generic front hood piece. That sounds good to me. We'll go ahead um, and it looks like we could probably do the same thing we were doing again. And that's looking really nice to me. Uh, is this the front part? It is. So maybe just flip it around. And I hope you guys can see just how much better this is and S22. I mean, 
some of these functions that I'm doing aren't very difficult, but it just feels like everything is m way more streamlined, um, especially with having all the tools that you would need just right here in the middle and splitting the viewport up. It's, it's just been such a nice, uh, welcomed addition to S22. Uh, we could also just go ahead and redo this, run this command real quick. And you can see that the bottom part is causing a lot of issues here. So what we'll do is just split this again. and call this uh, bottom and then we'll run this command again okay now so that we got that cleaned up if we wanted to say take this into substance painter or maybe just stay in um, cinema 4d and actually paint this up we could collapse all of this so connect objects and delete so now that we have these pieces collapsed uh, i'm going to go ahead and use this bounding box and I'm going to say equalize these island size and uh, we're going to preserve the orientation and turn the spacing down really low, zero. So now you can see that all of these share around the same texel density. Okay, now let's do something kind of fun here in body paint. So we'll duplicate this and call this uh, paint racing stripes and we'll apply this material to the front piece of the hood and we'll enable it. Um, now what it's going to do is it's going to add, a, if I double click here, it's going to add in the color channel. So um, let's do uh, 2048 is fine. Actually, let me just do that real quick. 2048. Um, and then we'll do some kind of darker color, maybe like that. We'll hit OK. And it will add it to the color channel, but I'm just going to copy this. Um, since I'm not actually using the color channel in this shader, I'm using the reflectance uh, Lambertian kind of uh, BSDF here. So I'm going to just paste this and that's going to create that channel. It's going to know what we're trying to do. It's, it's following our move. Um, and then we'll go into the um, body paint section and maybe come up to the top view and drag a rectangle selection. And we'll grab these sections here. Um, hold shift and select over here and then we'll grab our paint bucket and then we'll go ahead and fill and you can see that that's looking pretty cool not very even I <laughs> probably want to edit this a little bit but I think you guys kind of get the idea of uh, how fast you can unwrap something and then start painting here in Cinema 4D S22 uh, we only covered a few things here but if you watch this video and then jump into some of your projects. I'm hoping that you will get the majority of your work done just from seeing this. So if you guys like this, definitely give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment section down below for maybe some new videos that I could do in the future. But until then, you guys take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.